objective two of 2.8, the derivative as a function, the student will understand the meanings of other notations. The student will be able to interpret other notations. If we use the traditional notation, y equals f of x, to indicate that the independent variable is x and the dependent variable is y, then some common alternative notations for the derivative are as follows. We are familiar with f prime of x. Occasionally, you will see y prime. Uh, the Leibniz notation, dy over dx. And, well, y is f of x, so we could say df over dx. You don't see that one often. And then there could be d, dx, and then f of x. Sometimes we see that, d, dx, and then a function. Big D, f of x, and big D, sub x, f of x. The symbols big D and d, dx are called differentiation operators because they indicate the operation of differentiation, which is a process of calculating a derivative. The symbol dy, dy over dx, which we usually just say dy dx, was introduced by Leibniz. And it should not be regarded as a ratio, right? It looks like it wants to be a fraction. For the time being, we will not think of it as a ratio. It is simply a synonym for f prime of x, a thing that means the same thing as f prime of x. Nonetheless, it is a very useful and suggestive notation, especially when used in conjunction with increment notation with the deltas. We can rewrite the definition of the derivative in Leibniz notation in the form dy dx equals the limit as delta x goes to zero, delta y over delta x. And so you see the suggestiveness Delta, of course, is the Greek letter, which uh, usually functions as a, a D does in English. So we see the dy dx in the delta y over delta x. If we want to indicate the value of the derivative dy dx in Leibniz notation at a specific number a, we can use this notation where we say, okay, work, 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 we've got dy dx, and then we're going to evaluate it at a number a, some number. That's what this is saying. Or you could do it with a bracket. The only difference is these little tails. So that's a synonym, a synonym for f prime of a. Here's an important definition, which won't seem important at first. A function f is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. It is differentiable on an open interval a b if it is differentiable at every number in the interval. <clears throat> So, sometimes it's, you're going to be asked or have to decide where or if a function is differentiable at a particular number. And so you have to ask yourself, does f prime of a exist? Okay, so here's such a problem. Where is the function f of x equals absolute x differentiable? Okay, so we're thinking, okay, uh, what is the set of numbers a such that f prime of a 
exists. Well, for positive numbers, then uh, absolute x is just x, right? The absolute value of anything positive is just the thing. You don't need the absolute value bars. And we can choose h small enough such that x plus h is greater than 0. x plus h is positive, right? Because h is going to 0. And so we could say that's uh, close enough to 0 so that the positive number x plus h, whatever it is, if it's going to 0, x plus h is going to be positive. Well, if it's positive, then we're going to be able to say, oh, OK, well, absolute x plus h, which is going to appear in the expression for the derivative, well, you don't need the absolute value bars if you, if you have a positive thing. Therefore, for x greater than 0, we have. OK, so now here's f prime of x. Here's our definition of the derivative. And uh, applied to this particular function, the absolute value function. Well, it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. But that absolute x plus h, you don't need the absolute value bars. This expression can be simplified to h over h, which is just 1. And so f is differentiable for any x positive. You know, what, what, what's the deal with the 1? Why does that matter? What, you know, why is, what's so great about that? Well, remember what we're trying to show. We're trying to show differentiab differentiability for some values basically the positive ones, and that's going to hold if f prime of a exists. Well, we just showed that it exists. It's 1. So for x positive, the um, f prime of a does exist for all those numbers. And so for x positive, we do have differentiability. Let's think about the negative values. x negative, we have absolute x equals negative x. Like, well, absolute x equals negative x, why is that? OK, well, let's just think about this. We've got a number like negative 5, OK? That's less than 0. And by the, absolute, by the definition of absolute value, OK, if the inside of the absolute value bars is negative, you know, then it's actually negative of that inside, negative x, negative of negative 5, and that's 5. Of course, we know that's true, that the absolute value of negative 5 equals 5. Okay, so 2 with any negative value of x. So absolute x, that's the same thing as negative x. h is going to 0, so it can be chosen small enough so that x plus h is necessarily negative. It's less than 0. And so by the same rule that, that we came up with this result, you know, if the inside is negative, which we just said it was, okay, we just said it's less than 0, if the inside is negative, then the absolute value is the negative of that negative thing, negative of the quantity x plus h. Well, that's going to be helpful for us because we, ha we happen to have that absolute value of x plus h in our expression. Uh, same thing that we had before, uh, only this time we're going to be able to write the negative of the sum of x and h. And then when we um, simplify, we already said that this absolute value here is negative x. When we simplify, we're going to have a negative x and a positive x. And uh, that negative is going to distribute to the h. And we're just going to have negative h over h, which is negative 1. As h goes to 0, that's negative 1. And so f prime of a exists for, for a negative number. Since it exists, we do have differentiability for x 
less than zero, x to the left. So now we've got differentiability for all of the positive numbers and differentiability for all of the negative numbers. What about zero? Well, we're trying now to find uh, f prime of zero. We're going to try to figure out whether that exists. Okay, so we go to the definition. We put the zero in for a. And remember that our function is the absolute value function. So we have absolute zero plus h minus, minus absolute zero all over h and take a limit as h goes to zero. Well, this is h over h, um, absolute h over h. And so is that, does that exist? Okay, I mean, we, there, there could be an issue. So absolute h, um, well, that might mean one thing on the right and one thing on the left, okay? We have to compute the limits separately and see if they are the same because, remember the right hand limit has to equal the left hand limit if we can talk about a limit, okay? But for absolute h, for absolute h, right? h might approach zero from the left or from the right h might be positive or negative. So we have to consider h and we have to consider negative h. Okay, well h over h is 1, negative h over h is negative 1. As h goes to 0 from the right, that the limit is 1. As h goes to 0 from the left, the limit is negative 1. These are different. The left-hand limit is different from the right-hand limit. And so by the theorem, we have to say that that uh, limit, uh, that, that uh, the limit does not exist. The limit which is used in the definition of f prime of a. And so the derivative the limit does not exist, the derivative does not exist for zero. Since these limits are different, f prime of zero does not exist, thus f is differentiable everywhere except zero. And so here is a formula or a way to state the function which is the derivative. For positive values of x it's 1, okay, so that's why we have all these points on the graph of the derivative. This is not f, this is f prime of x. f prime of x. And negative 1 to the left. And it's not even defined at zero. There is no point zero something. The graph is shown in figure 5b. That's the graph of the derivative. That was the graph of the derivative. Here's the graph of f. Well, of course, we know the graph of f. We you know, that's one of our parent functions, one of, one of the functions in our library of functions, f of x equals x, okay? Now, maybe this picture came to mind when we considered the question at the very beginning, several slides ago. Where's the function f of x equals absolute x differentiable, okay? And you thought about, okay, well, uh, there's tangent, everywhere, but there's not a tangent at 0, 0. And so it's not going to be differentiable there. We can't talk about you know the slope of the tangent because we don't know how that tangent is supposed to go. Okay. Another word for differentiable, kind of an informal word, is just smooth. Okay. Differentiable means smooth. 
so it's not smooth at the vertex okay um, it's got a what we could call a corner or a cusp and a function is not dis, uh, differentiable where you have a corner or a cusp both continuity remember continuity okay uh, limit as x goes to a of f of x equals f of a that's continuity at a number a now we've got differentiability that's a different limit they are desirable properties for a function to have sure being able to uh, draw a graph without lifting your pencil from the paper and having smoothness those are desirable properties the following theorem shows how the properties are related if a function is differentiable at a number a then it is continuous at a if it's smooth at a then it has to be that you could graph it without lifting your pencil from the paper at a that makes sense so uh, rem uh, remember that theorem if differentiable then continuous the converse is not true you can't say if continuous then differentiable right that would be the converse the if then in the other sense it's not true that if continuous then differentiable it's not true that if you could graph it without lifting your pencil from the paper then it's smooth at a number a and of course the problem that we just did that is you know exhibit a that's the most common example that the converse of if differentiable then continuous is false because if we let a be zero you know it's continuous but it's not differentiable we can lift we can uh, graph it without lifting our pencil from the paper but it's not smooth there there are functions that are continuous but not differentiable uh, for example f of x equals absolute x at x equals zero